Welcome again in my course Power Electronics Applications in Power Systems. Uh, in the last few lectures, I discuss uh, a specific type of uh, series compensation that is uh, TCSC. Uh, its full form is thyristor control series capacitor, right? So, I discuss the basic operating principle. I also discuss the uh, mathematical model of TCSC and also I discuss the analysis of TCSC performance uh, all together in the previous lecture. Okay. So, this lecture is the last part of the uh, TCSC module. In this particular lecture, I will discuss the application and control of TCSC. Okay. So, let us proceed. So, application and control of TCSC. Okay. So, in this particular lecture, I will discuss different applications of TCSC. Also, I will discuss different uh, control approaches for TCSC. Right? Now, so where is their application? Of course, uh, this application of TCSC is in power system. So, now if we write this applications. of TCSC in power system. Then we can categorize, we can categorize various applications into two different parts. One is called common level. common level application. Another is called modular level. So, if you can uh, remember my first lecture on TCSC, I discuss that uh, TCSC is not a uh, single module. Okay. Rather, multiple TCSC modules are connected in series to form a single TCSC. This I discussed at the very beginning of this uh, basic schematic diagram of TCSC. Right? Now, uh, so therefore, uh, we have two different applications or control levels. One is called common level. So, this common level is applicable to all modules. applicable to all modules and in modular level means it is uh, applicable to individual modular okay, or individual module. Okay. So, now in common level control we have multiple application, we have multiple application. Okay. Specifically, we have four different applications. One is called power scheduling control. Next is called power swing damping control or damping of power system oscillations, you know power swing. damping control. One is called transient stability enhancement. Another application is sub synchronous
damping control. These are all uh, common level control uh, and I will discuss each of these different control approaches or each of these different applications of TCSC uh, in very detail in this particular lecture. Now, let us see what are the uh, you know uh, control or applications available for modular level of a TCSC. There are three different uh, this this control uh, or applications of TCSC in modular level available. One is called reactance control. Okay, as you have seen that uh, basically this Vernier mode of operation of TCSC is done with the reactance control. Okay, and I already uh, derived the expression mathematical expressions for uh, TCSC reactance in the last lecture and you can see that that reactance uh, can be controllable with the appropriate uh, setting of this angle of advance that is beta. Okay. So, according to the requirement. Okay. Now, next is sump synchronous damping control which is very important control application. Now, why this happens uh, subsynchronous, what do you mean by subsynchronous damping? This I will discuss uh, in this particular lecture also and why it is so important in TCSC that thing also I will discuss. Now, apart from that we there is an another modular level control we exist which is called bypass protection. Okay. So, when uh, we need to bypass this uh, TCSC, uh, we need to initiate this uh, modular level control uh, approach which is called bypass protection. Now, uh, this bypass protection are of um, different types, one is called when line over current will happen due to some reason due to faults etcetera, then modular level control application would be initiated to bypass the whole unit from the system. So, this is just a protective measure you can say. So, there is a lightening arrestor. So, arrestor over current is another mode of uh, control application which is modular level applications. So, when there is a lightening and there is a over current due to lightening in the line then this TCSC should be able to protect itself by initiating this modular level control action. Okay. Now, there is another control uh, bypass protection control which is called energy protection which is similar to this PBS2 protection uh, I discuss, but whenever there is a over current or abnormalities if these two control action did not initiate then uh, it will uh, this energy protection will be initiated it will calculate the energy for a short duration and if it goes above the threshold value it will disconnect or it will uh, initiate this bypass protection mode of TCSC. Okay. So, altogether these applications of this TCSC in power systems are of these different control actions or these different control applications to power system. Okay. Now, I will discuss all this one by one, all these different techniques one by one. So, in fact, uh, you can understand that some of the control actions are similar like uh, the sub synchronous damping control is common to common level control as well as modular level control. So, I will discuss this once and this bypass mode uh, bypass protection mode I need not to discuss you it is uh, you should understand by your common sense. And this reactance control is eventually required for all these different other common level control like power scheduling control, power swing damping control, transient stability enhancements and so on. Okay. So, uh, I will start with this power scheduling control.
Now, this power scheduling control is an unique application of TCSC uh, similar to this power uh, flow enhancement uh, is done in case of static bar compensator. Okay. Now, uh, how this uh, power scheduling control uh, happens or what are the different types of power scheduling control actions uh, usually followed by TCAC, those things I will discuss. So, now first of all what is power, power scheduling control? Power scheduling control is to adjust the TCSC reactance which is nothing but ZTCSC I discuss in the last lecture. Okay, to adjust this uh, TCSC reactance to meet the required steady state power flow, steady state power flow through a transmission line. through a power transmission line. So, this is what the goal of this uh, you know uh, power scheduling control of TCSC and this is what the main purpose or main applications of TCSC in power system. Okay. This is something one needs to understand. So, uh, what it actually does? It adjusts the TCSC reactance that means ZTCSC. I already uh, derived the mathematical expression for uh, ZTCSC in my previous lecture and uh, thereby it will uh, help to meet the required power flow uh, through a particular transmission line or sometimes um, when we have multiple transmission lines working in a parallel. Uh, one of them may have this TCSC placed and uh, this, this transmission line we may call as a uh, TCSC compensated power transmission line and it can uh, do this, this same thing uh, that uh, this it can uh, help to meet uh, this, this steady state power flow through a particular transmission line or through a group of transmission line which are operated in parallel. Okay, this I will discuss. Now, there are two types of there are two types of power scheduling control. Okay. One is called one is called constant current mode constant current or CC mode of power scheduling. Another is called constant angular difference control, constant angular difference control of power scheduling. Okay. So, these are the two different modes of power scheduling and how this, mm, this, this power scheduling is done? This is done by using a feedback control or closed loop control action by ad, it, it will adjust uh, this, this reactance according to the required amount of power flow uh, through a particular transmission line where TCSC is placed. So, in constant current mode of power scheduling, it is something like this. We have a 
transmission line somewhere in the transmission line we have TCSC here for example we have TCSC. Now this is what the transmission line so what it does actually it, it uh, helps uh, this t the action of the TCSC is to control the reactance so it, it will adjust this J TCSC so that same amount of current will flow uh, through this particular transmission line irrespective of the other operating conditions uh, in that particular line. But the question is can it be possible to all this uh, different uh, loading scenarios or all these different operating scenarios of a power system? Of course, it is not possible. Uh, it, it, it can be possible to have uh, to maintain a certain amount of current or power flow through a transmission line uh, uh, when this, this TCSC uh, acts uh, according to this its capacity. Okay. Now, I will see what it is actually. So, it is con uh, this control characteristics is something like that this control characteristics of CC mode is something like that. We have a this axis we have a horizontal axis we have a vertical axis. Okay. In horizontal axis let us keep V TCSC that is voltage across this TCSC and in uh, vertical axis or y axis let us keep this line flow. Okay. Now, this control characteristics of TCSC in CC mode is that it can able to maintain this uh, current for a for a particular current this is what the current uh, might be up, up to a certain level of voltages uh, uh, voltages across this TCSC. Okay. And this control characteristic is something like this, this is this is suppose the point O that is origin, this is suppose point A okay. and this is what this control range that is let us say this is point B and this is what where it operates as a overlap region. Now, here you can see or I should draw this like this so that this will meet in the origin. Now, here this uh, A to B, A to B this is the control range of the TCSC, this is the control range. Within this range uh, of the voltage of across this TCSC, uh, this TCSC can uh, change its reactance to maintain this current flow or power flow through this transmission line constant. Okay. Now, that is what the control range is that I have the already discussed in case of SBC. In case of SBC, what actually it was in the, within the control range, it could maintain a certain voltage constant or maybe it could maintain a, a, a the voltage within a uh, given band according to the slope of the control characteristics. Uh, that is what the main purpose of uh, placing the SBC. Whereas, the placement of TCSC is to maintain the current within the control range constant flowing through it and obviously, when uh, since it is it is connected to a uh, um, particular transmission line in series. So, uh, when it helps to maintain the constant current across it, it means that it, it will eventually be helpful to maintain a constant current through the particular transmission line and thereby it will have be able to maintain a constant power flow through this particular transmission line. So, that is what the main task in uh, CC mode of operation of TCSC. Okay. Now, here this A B is the control range within which it uh, this TCSC would be able to maintain a constant current flow through it or through the transmission line 
and O A is one limit of this T C S C and B C is another limit. Okay. Now, the question is this what are the limits actually? Now, you, you see that if we that use uh, this uh, uh, equations form of this control characteristics, then you can see i is equal to that is y axis we have i, i is equal to some constant or some slope m, uh, m multiplied by this v t c s c where m is the slope, slope of the m is the slope of the straight line. Okay. Now, you can see this m is equal to i by v t c s c, v t c s c. Okay. Now, what is i by v t c s c? It is nothing but 1 upon v t c s c divided by i. Now, what is v t c s c divided by i? We know this voltage across this t c s c divided by the current flowing through it is one nothing but 1 upon z t c s c. Okay. So, therefore, the slope of this, uh, this O A is inversely uh, proportional to the reactance of the T C S C or impedance of the T C S C. So, the slope of this, uh, so therefore, you can understand that wherever is the higher slope that uh, corresponds to uh, minimum amount of T C S C or minimum T C S C limit and wherever we have lower slope we, that corresponds to ma maximum value of the T C S C. So, therefore, this O A corresponds. So, O A is O A corresponds to minimum slope that it is having minimum slope so therefore it is maximum value of ztcsc So, therefore, we can call this O A corresponds to O A corresponds to Z T C S C max. Similarly, this uh, B C will corresponds to Z T C S C mean. So, this corresponds to uh, maximum slope. So, therefore, minimum value of Z T C S C. So, that means, this is this O to B or B C corresponds to the minimum Z T C S C and O A corresponds to maximum Z T C S C. And you know that T C S C reactance can be controlled within its many minimum and maximum values. Uh, based upon its rating. Okay. So, therefore, uh, this within this particular control range, it can adjust this ZTCSC to any value like this to any value. So, that irrespective of the value of this VTCSC, it could be able to maintain a constant current flow or constant power flow through this particular transmission line. So, this is what the uh, constant current mode of power scheduling control of T C S C. Now, we move on this constant angular difference control of uh, power scheduling in, in short it is called as C A mode of control uh, of T C S C. Okay. So, what is actually done when we have uh, suppose two parallel transmission line one is this another is this where we have this T C S C. Okay. So, in constant current mode of operation what you have seen is it can uh, this this T C S C maintains a 
a constant power flow through TCSC compensated line. So, that is what you have seen. Whereas, here in constant angular difference mode of control of power scheduling in TCSC, TCSC maintains a constant power flow through the line parallel to TCSC compensated line. Now, look at the difference between this two modes of operation. In one case uh, TCSC, wherever the TCSC plays in that particular line, the current or power flow uh, is maintained with the TCSC action. Here this TCSC will uh, operate uh, to show that the power or current flow through this particular line which is in parallel to that TCSC compensated line constant. So, here the uh, goal of this TCSC was to maintain a constant current flow or power flow through the uh, TCSC compensated line. Here in case of constant angular control, the goal is to maintain a constant current flow or power flow through the line which is in parallel to the TCSC compensated line. Okay. So, that is what the difference is. Now, let us see the control characteristics. control characteristics, I am writing characteristics in short of C A mode. In control characteristics in C A mode, it would be something like this. Again, we will be having y axis or vertical axis as the line flow or current flow and this uh, horizontal axis will be V T C S. Now, in this particular this control, the characteristics is something like this. We have this is O, this is point A in the control mode, then this is what the control range A to B and this is what this B to C. Now, here this control range is this, control range is this, this is what the control range. Now, the question is why this control range is like a straight line having a intercept, you can look at this A B, the difference of this control range and this control range when we have C C mode of control is that here a B is having sub slope with a some intercept with the uh, vertical axis. Here A B is in parallel to the uh, horizontal axis or x axis. So, that is what the difference. Now, the question is why it is so? How can we mathematically justify this? In order to justify this mathematically, so you have to understand when it is possible that you can keep the power flow or line flow constant through the parallel line of the TCSC compensated line. This is only possible if you have, if you can maintain a constant voltage drop across the uh, this, this, this two line. So, here TCSC maintains a constant voltage drop within its within its control range ok. So, therefore, if it is so then uh, we can write i x this x is not x t c s c that is what the x of this uh, parallel line. So, i x minus this v t c s c 
is equal to constant and k. So, k is our constant. Okay. So, what is this I x minus V T C S C? This is what the drop voltage drop through this particular line and the same voltage drop will be applicable to the parallel line as well because they are in parallel. So, therefore, from this equation I can I can find out I is equal to k by x. Now, here x is equal to this line reactance. Okay. So, uh, I is equal to k plus uh, divided by x plus V T C S C divided by x. Now, you know that uh, this uh, k is constant and x is also constant. So, this part is constant. So, let us consider another constant c 1 and this part x is constant. So, we have some another constant c 2 then P T C S C. So, therefore, the equation will be like this i is equal to c 1 which is a constant plus addition to c 2 which is another constant multiplied by V T C S C. This gives the same characteristic shown by a b. So, we have some positive intercept which corresponds to C 1 and we have some slope C 2 positive slope multiplied by V T C S C. And you know this O A corresponds to this uh, slope uh, which is higher. So, therefore, this, this will corresponds to Z T C S C minimum. And this B C will have a slope corresponds to Z T C S C maximum. Okay. So, this is what this power scheduling control okay. and this is what the applications of T C S C in power scheduling control and you can understand this control characteristics of C C mode and C A mode as well. Okay. So, this is how T C S C is operated to schedule the power flow through a transmission line. Okay. Now, we will come to the second application which is of course, a part of this uh, power scheduling control also that is T C S C also uh, can enhance the power flow through a particular transmission line. So, we will write T C S C in enhancement. of steady state steady state power transmission capacity so this is also a part of this power scheduling control only but this is one of the applications of tcs in power system and you can see if you can go back and uh, look back my previous lecture in particular when I discuss this SBC applications in power system. I said that SBC can increase or can enhance the power flow or the steady state power transmission capacity of, of a typical transmission line. Similarly, TCSC can also do the same thing, but there is a difference by the way they, they do. Okay. So, T C S C can enhance the steady state power transfer capacity. So, T C S C can enhance the steady state power transfer capacity similar to SBC, but there is a difference how they do this thing. Okay. In SBC, you, you can remember that SBC also the placement of SBC uh, also enhance the steady state power uh, transfer capacity. How it is done? By uh, changing the midpoint voltage or the voltage wherever this SBC is connected. So, SBC can change the voltage uh, wherever it is connected and thereby it can uh, also enhance the uh, power flow or the power transfer capacity. Whereas, TCSC basically adjusts 
the denominator of the power flow equation. Now, what is power flow equation? We know power suppose we have a uh, transmission line over here and let us consider that at some point we have TCSC. Here we have TCSC. Okay. Now, we know that um, suppose this uh, voltage at this end is V at an angle delta, voltage at this end is V at an angle 0 and X is the of course, uh, let us consider that this is there is no TCSC over here. So, it is like a simple transmission line. So, uh, the re x is the reactance of the line. Then the power flow of this uh, you know the power flow equation that is the active power flow is V square divided by x sin delta. Okay. And we can plot this also. So, if this is P, this is delta. So, this plot is something like this, where this is the maximum power flow which is representing V square by x and uh, this is corresponds to delta is equal to 0, this is corresponds to delta is equal to pi. So, this happens when delta is equal to pi by 2. This is something is well known to us. However, suppose if we have a TCSC over here. Okay for the same transmission line having this voltages are V delta, this voltages is V naught, we have this x the reactance of the line. Now, here because of this Z T C S C, because of this uh, this reactance here uh, which is represented by Z T C S C and Z T C S C can be positive, can be negative. Now, when Z T C S C is capacitive. Now, if for both the you know analysis, we assume that our assumption is lossless system. So, these assumptions I have taken consistently throughout this lecture. So, you can always assume that there is no loss in the transmission line, there is no power loss inside this JTCSC as well. So, therefore, when this Z T C S is capacitive, the power flow expression would be V square divided by x minus Z T C S C sin delta. Okay. So, therefore, this T C S C presence of T C S C is it is it is uh, impacting on this denominator of the power flow equation. So, therefore, for the same line, if this uh, your power flow characteristics was like this without T C S C. So, this is suppose without T C S C this power flow characteristics P delta characteristics okay, similar to this. Then with this T C S C the characteristics would be changed to something like this. So, this is be this uh, power flow characteristics with T C S C. So, this is something you, you know already. Now, how it is done by changing this denominator of the power flow equation. So, T C S C uh, the pre with its capacitive vernier mode of control can enhance uh, the steady state power transfer capacity of the line. So, T C S C with capacitive vernier control control can enhance the steady state power transfer of a transmission line. So, this is something uh, is easy to understand. Now, there is an advantage of TCSC as already I, I discussed with the mathematical derivation that 
uh, the rating requirement of the series compensator to enhance the power transfer capacity is much lesser than the rating requirement of the shunt compensator. So, in that sense uh, TCSC with a smaller capacity or TCSC with a smaller rating can enhance similar power transfer capacity of a transmission line as compared to, to a SVC. Okay. So, this is something uh, already I have uh, established with mathematical derivations. There is another advantage that uh, the TCSC can be placed anywhere in the network depending upon the uh, or anywhere in the transmission line depending upon the availability of the space and the this operator perspective. Whereas, this uh, SBC we have already seen uh, it is the, the uh, impact of this SBC placement would be uh, higher if we place it at the midpoint. Okay. So, so, there are two advantages. of TCSC placement over SVC. Okay. Number one is uh, the TCSC with lower rating can enhance similar enhance or equal amount of power transfer capacity as compared to SVC. Second is that TCSC can be placed anywhere in a transmission line. So, at any I mean TCSC can be placed either near to this sending end site or receiving end site or at the midpoint or however to have a same impact unlike this SBC placement. This is something I want to discuss. Now application of TCSC, application of TCSC in transient stability enhancement. So, application of TCSC in transient stability enhancement. Okay. So, similar to SVC, TCSC can also improve the transient stability. So, how it can improve? Let us see. Now, you can see that uh, this without TCSC, if this power delta characteristic is something like this, P delta characteristic is something like this, where this is P max. Then you have seen that with TCSC, this power flow characteristics would be something like this. this is p, this is delta. So, this now this characteristics will be something like this. Okay. So, here we will have this p max. Now, you can see suppose this is what the mechanical power p mech and there is a fault in this transient fault. In, in a typical transmission line, you see that this is the point where this fault happens. Then what will happen at the instant the fault happens, P uh, will come down to 0, 
but mechanical power will be there. So, it will cause a increase in the speed of the generator. So, then suppose at this point fault is cleared and then this delta will swing up to this point okay, and it will get settled before it, it gets settles. So, therefore, you know that this is what this uh, accelerating power and this is what the decelerating power which are to be equal to have a uh, stable operation of the system and this I already discussed and then whatever the amount of area left in this P delta curve we call it we call it this the margin area. So, this is called this area this area is called A margin. Okay. So, this is what the marginal area which is left to help the system stable okay. and uh, if, if this fault clears uh, beyond this marginal area it, it will the system will lose stability and it will be unstable. So, those things I already discussed. Now, similar to this suppose uh, here also for SPC uh, TCSC compensated line here suppose we have this mechanical power this is P mech and similar kind of fault is initiated. So, again this fault is cleared at this point. So, at this point it will be stable. Here also we will have the same criteria accelerating power uh, should be equal to the decelerating power uh, that is equal area criteria. However, here you can see this marginal area would be that much. And obviously, this marginal area, so this is the marginal area A margin with TCSC. Now, you can see if you compare this marginal area with that marginal area, so you one can un understand that A margin TCSC will be much higher than A margin without TCSC. So, it means that this marginal area for stability transient stability of this P delta curve with TCSC is higher. So, this concludes that this marginal area of P delta curve with TCSC is higher. Okay. So, that is how uh, it, it is uh, it can improve the transient stability of a particular uh, system wherever it is placed. So, this is similar to this uh, what we call uh, this SVC application in power system. Now, next I will discuss the next application of TCSC which is uh, TCSC. application of TCSC in power swing damping control. Okay. Now, how a TCSC can improve the power swing damping control? You know that uh, a power uh, angle the delta will undergo uh, some sort of uh, uh, swings due to some disturbance or uh, uh, some events after a, uh, after a certain event in a power system and uh, it is very important to uh, this, this uh, control this swing by providing appropriate damping and this is possible uh, by using this TCSC control. Okay. Now, how do we realize this uh, damping control? It may so happen that we will realize this power swing with the change of del del delta with del t okay, which is similar to this, this uh, change of the frequency 
which is similar to change in the frequency. Suppose this this parameter this del delta to del t increases at this uh, particular instant of time after a major uh, this event or major uh, disturbance in a power system. So, what it is to be done uh, in that case when this frequency is increased that means this mechanical out power mechanical power power is higher than the electrical power than the electrical power. So, if it happens then what we need to do the electrical power need to be increased so that we can arrest this change of del del t to del t. So, therefore, if it happens then T C S C with capacitive mode of operation operation can suddenly increase the electrical power. So, this is how it uh, TCSC can do. So, in order to uh, damp the first swing, so it, 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 it will uh, this TCSC what it will do? It will uh, just operate its maximum capacitive mode. Okay. So, thereby uh, it suddenly increase the uh, this this uh, power flow through the line and uh, just by modulating its reactance and again when uh, this del del t uh, to del t goes below this uh, to a certain threshold then it, it uh, uh, register operate from this modulation. Okay. So, similarly if this del del t to del t is declining then TCSC with inductive mode mode of operation can suddenly reduce the electrical power and this is how it can provide the appropriate damping just by modulating the reactance of the TCSC uh, from this maximum capacitive mode to maximum inductive mode and uh, with a very short duration it is it is usually done and thereby it can provide appropriate damping to the system. Now, one uh, is the last application that I will discuss that TCSC in subsynchronous damping control. damping control. Now, what do you mean by subsynchronous damping? In power system, in power system typically a, a power swing uh, below the power frequency. The power frequency in India you know is 50 hertz. So, below this 50 hertz uh, sometimes this the power swing happens and this is this happens basically due to the uh, this resonance or series resonance of the uh, this series reactance and the series uh, series capacitance which is provided by the series compensation and this sometimes would be detrimental this sometimes would have much uh, effort uh, impact uh, on this power system and in 1970s it has been seen that some of the generator as a result of this some synchronous oscillation uh, causes so vibration that they uh, there are uh, breaking of their sets. Okay. So, therefore, this subsynchronous damping is very essential in uh, power system okay. and in TCSC can provide uh, this modulation of its reactance to. So, TCSC modulates its reactance to sufficiently uh, 
damp the subsynchronous swing of subsynchronous oscillation. There, is various, there are various research papers are developing this control approach to damp the uh, subsynchronous oscillation with the TCSC control. You, can, you may go through if you are interested further. Okay. So, this is what it is. Now, we will go for this last part of this lecture that uh, uh, this TCSC control block diagram. So, TCSC control block diagram has several blocks. One is the main block is powered scheduling block, which is the main purpose of TCSC power scheduling block. This inputs are VTCSC and I, you already have seen and output is ZTCSC or this I said X reference. Okay. And then there is a comparator where this there are some auxiliary sim, you know signal and there is a modulating reactance whenever there is a tangent or we require to modulate this. Then uh, whatever we this reactance is fed, it is compared with the x max and x min that means minimum and maximum value of ZTCSC and then there is a transfer function which is specifically for uh, this delay in this uh, TCSC operation. This T is the time period. and it is fed to the XTCSC symbol and then from this XTCSC appropriate uh, this appropriate uh, this getting pulse is generated and it is fed to the uh, getting operation of the thyristors. So, from this we have this getting pulse and uh, GPU unit get uh, and which is fed this thing I am not shown over here. Now, in case of uh, this block diagram for CA or CC control, this block diagram for CA or CC mode of operation, it would be something like this. We have a reference signal generated and it is fed, then there is a comparator like this, we have this measured signal of I m, okay. I m is here measured signal, we have a control block for this time for this measurement and then we also have a another comparator which compare this current and there is a control block by u and here we have VTCS. Okay. Now, u is 0 for uh, C C mode of operation because we do not need uh, this it, it is only required to have a maintain a current there and u is equal to 1 for C A mode of operation. Now, here in this particular comparator, this reference signal and measure signals are compared. Then we have this regulator unit and then we have a comparator of, uh, uh, to, to check the minimum and maximum of this reactance and here we provide this x reference. Okay. This is what the block diagram for C and C C mode of uh, power scheduling control for TCS. Okay. So, this is all uh, about this uh, this control and applications for TCSC and uh, as I promised I discuss all these different 
uh, types of this control actions which includes power scheduling control, power swing damping control, tangent stability, subsynchronous damping, then reactance control and subsynchronous damping control for all these different control actions for TCSC. And with this I will stop today and we will proceed further uh, for the next module of this course. Okay. Thank you very much for joining this lecture. I look forward to see you in the next lecture. Thank you.